join my Patreon at patreon.com slash bunnytails for the full uncut reactions. Thank you for watching. Hey everyone, welcome back to more Star Trek The Original Series. We have three episodes left of this season and I'm very excited to watch them, to finish this season, to finally look at my top 10. And I've just been having such a good time, as you guys know, and I'm always happy when I get to watch a new episode of this. So today's episode is called The Ultimate Computer, which doesn't sound super exciting just by the title. We've uh, dealt with a lot of really smart, really complex, really strong computers, but this one is the ultimate one, apparently. All right, guys, enjoy the episode. See you guys in the comments. This is Commodore Enright. Yes, Commodore, I'd like an explanation. The explanation is beaming aboard now, Captain. Oh, he's like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> I receive orders to proceed here, no reason given. I'm informed that my men will be removed to the space station to a security holding area. Security holding? You're going to be the fox in the hunt. War games. I'll be commanding the attack force against you. Have you heard of the M5 Multitronic unit? Dr. Richard Daystrom's device, isn't it? Its purpose is to correlate all computer activity aboard a starship to provide the ultimate in vessel operation and control. Well, what has all this got to do with the Enterprise, Governor? They're gonna put... You've been chosen to test the M5, Jim. Yeah. Now, if the M5 works under actual conditions as well as it has under simulated tests, it will mean a revolution. Dr. Daystrom will see to the installation himself, and he'll supervise the tests. When he's ready, he'll receive your orders and proceed on the mission with a crew of 20. I can't run a starship with 20 crew. 20 crew and one M5. Then what am I supposed to do? All you have to do is sit back and let the machine do the work. I've said this so many times that I feel like a broken record by this point. But this seems very, uh, um, I can't think of the word, but it's very pertinent or whatever uh, to our time because humans are beginning to and will continue to be replaced by machines. We are attempting to prove that it can run this ship more efficiently than man. Maybe you're trying to prove that, Spock, but don't count me in on it. The most unfortunate lack in current computer programming is that there is nothing available to immediately replace the starship surgeon. <laughs> Whoa, sorry. <laughs> I didn't think he was gonna go there. Jim, you haven't had much to say about this. What do you want me to say? He's just gotta follow orders. An honor, they tell me. Well, I'm honored. <laughs> Whatever you say, command. Ah, you'd be Captain Kirk. Yes, Dr. Daystrom. This is my first officer, Mr. Spock. Now, this guy is a genius. Even your breakthrough in Duotronics did not have the promise of this. The M5 has been perfected, Commander. Has it? We'll see about that. If this thing doesn't work, there are not enough men aboard to run the ship, and that's begging for trouble. Oh. That is a very good point, Bones. What if something goes wrong? 20 people isn't enough. There are certain things men must do to remain men. Or perhaps you object to the possible loss of the prestige and the ceremony accorded the starship captain. The computer can do your job, and without all that. You'll have to prove that to me, Doctor. That is what we're here for, isn't it, Captain? <laughs> With all due respect. <laughs> Did you see the love light in Spock's eyes? The right computer finally came along. <laughs> I'm getting a... Red alert, right here. Spidey sense is going off. Am I afraid of losing my job to that computer? Well, Daystrom did design the computers that run this ship under human mm -hmm. control. Mm-hmm. Am I afraid of losing the prestige and the power that goes with being a starship captain? Is that why I'm fighting? Am I that petty? Why don't you ask James T. Kirk? He's a pretty honest guy. <laughs> Very good advice. I love this like inner struggle and doubt that he's he's thinking of right now. M5 has performed admirably so far. Just to check out could have done that with her eyes closed. 
Yes, but you see, the idea is they didn't have to do it. Okay, but flying is one thing, but... Approaching Alpha Carinai 2. ETA, five minutes. You must commit the M5 to analyze data regarding landing party recommendations. If you don't mind, I'll make my own recommendations. Do they want this thing to run the ship without any person at all? Or just like with a very small crew is what they would propose? And if there were still a crew, then wouldn't Kirk still have a command? And if there weren't a crew and Kirk didn't have a command, then how are they going to make contact with alien civilizations and... I'm confused. A number of islands, life form readings. Life forms. So it did say it was going to make a recommendation for the crew. Oh, great. We forgot to pay the electric bill again. M5's readout, Captain. All right, my recommendations. The survey party will consist of myself, Dr. McCoy, astrobiologist Phillips, geologist Rollins, and science officer Spock. Play M5's recommendations, won't you, Mr. Spock? Please don't say it's going to be the exact same thing that Kirk said. <laughs> Science officer Spock, astrobiologist Phillips, geologist Carstairs. Why pick Carstairs instead of Rollins? Aren't you really more interested in why M5 did not select you and Dr. McCoy? Well, let's find out anyway. Why were the captain and the chief medical officer not included in recommendation? Non-essential personnel. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so I think I'm beginning to understand. They have like a small crew, but this thing is the captain. That thing's turning off systems all over the ship. Well, if they're not necessary with a small crew, then why waste power? Granted, it can work a thousand, a million times faster than the human brain, but it can't make a value judgment. It has an intuition. It can't think. The Multitronic unit is a revolution in computer science. Can't we just have a happy balance where we just kind of upgrade what we already have and keep everything Very else, good. including the crew, the same? Paralleling our course, as yet unidentified. Ooh. Okay. How are we going to handle this, Mr. Computer? Identification. Captain, the M5 unit has already identified the vessels as Federation starships Excalibur and Lexington. This may be a surprise attack as a problem for the M5. Oh, boy. This is an unscheduled M5 drill. Acknowledge, Lieutenant. M5 has acknowledged for us, sir. Then go to red alert. Hi, sir. <coughs> Captain M5 is all over. Right. the sound of the red alert, all right? Speed increasing to warp three. Turning now to 112 Mark 5. To have your life in the hands of this computer that you don't know anything about main phase is fire <laughs> a hit sir two more very accurate warp four speed firing again attacking vessels are moving off moving back to original course and speed well i mean that seemed no appreciable damage rather impressive display for a machine yeah. That was very impressive. Very quick. Made all the adjustments in seconds. The ship reacted more rapidly than human control could have maneuvered her. Mm hmm. Machine of a man, Spock. Computers make excellent and efficient servants, but I have no wish to serve under them. Captain, a starship also runs on loyalty mm -hmm. to one man. And nothing to replace it for him. Stop it! You know I'm weak to that. <laughs> Even Spock is anti-machine in this case. Our compliments to the M5 unit and regards to Captain Dunsell. Who the blazes is Captain Dunce? What does it mean, Jeff? It means he's out of a job. He just... He says, well... I'm no longer needed. Done so, Doctor. It refers to a part which serves no useful purpose. They were calling Kirk a Dunsel? Sounds like Dunce. So he's just a captain in name and nothing else. I strongly prescribe it, Jim. 
I sat there and watched my ship perform for a mass of circuits and felt useless. Unneeded. To Captain Denzel. <laughs> to James T. Kirk, captain of the Enterprise. Thank you, Doctor. I love this so much already. 20th century Earth. All I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer by. Even if you take away the wind and the water, it's still the same. And the stars are still there, won't you? Very poetic. Romantic, even. Moving vessel. Unidentified. This is not a drill. Not a drill. On my way. He says, oh, I feel useless, but he's like, oh, got to get up there. <laughs> As an old style ore freighter converted to automation. No crew. Hmm. Computer versus computer. Speed increasing to warp three, Captain. Cut speed to warp one, navigator. I want that ship given a wide berth. She won't respond. She won't to respond. She's maintaining course. Is the M5 wanting to attack or what? Fantastic machine, the M5. No off switch. Captain. Photon torpedoes locking on target. Why? Full power. Full power? Why? Disengage this computer now. Your brilliant young computer just destroyed an ore freighter. In fact, it went out of its way to destroy an ore freighter. Fortunately, it was only a robot ship. Could have been. What if it was manned? We are breaking off M5 tests and returning to the space station. Yep. M5 is out of a job. <laughs> uh, yeah, but something tells me it's not going to be as All easy right, as this off. Whoa! Kirk versus the Enterprise. And the ship, the, oh, sorry, the M5 could just turn off life support. This entire exercise is a trial for M5, a shakedown. You must expect a few minor difficulties. Minor? Give me a few moments with him. No, stay here. All right, Scotty, turn it off. Your job here is done, mister. That thing murdered one of my crewmen, and now you tell me you can't turn it off? What? I think I blinked and I missed the, the guy disappearing. We'll reach the rendezvous point for the war games within an hour. We must regain control of the ship by then. Oh, no. Most illogical. Of all people, he should have known how the computer would perform. Please, Spock, do me a favor and don't say it's fascinating. No, but it is interesting. <laughs> Which is basically the same thing, almost. Have you found a solution? A way to shut that thing off? You don't shut a child off when it makes a mistake. M5 is growing, learning. No! Someone already died! Frightened because you can't understand it. Because somebody died! One machine can do all those things they send men out to do now. Men no longer need die in space. Somebody died. And go on to achieve greater things than fact-finding and dying for galactic space. You can't understand. But no, yeah, I don't understand because this goes against the whole mission of the Enterprise. He just wants man to stay on Earth and do great things there? What's greater than this? At the age of 24, he made the duotronic breakthrough that won him the Nobel and Z Magni prizes. Maybe that's the trouble. Where do you go from up? It's genius doesn't work on an assembly line basis. Did Einstein produce new and revolutionary theories on a regular schedule? You can't simply say, today I will be brilliant. Jim, if a man had a child who'd gone antisocial, kill perhaps, he'd still tend to protect that child. It's not a child, though. <laughs> it's, it's a deadly machine. Can't do it. Now let me have it for a while. Let me work with it for a while, please. please. Yeah, go back to the drawing board. This is no... Your test failed. It's over. We're going to wrap it up. Dr. Daystrom, I want an answer. What is it? Exactly. I've developed a method of impressing human engrams upon the computer circuits. M5 thinks, Oh, my Captain. God. That's the worst thing you could do. Sir, sensors are picking up four Federation starships. Force the war games. But M5 doesn't know it's a game. And M5 is going to destroy them. Oh my god. 
This is so intense. This is crazy. Does M5 understand that this is only a drill? Of course. The ore ship was a miscalculation, an accident. So how do you know this isn't going to be another miscalculation? The faces are firing, sir. <laughs> oh, my God. What the devil is Kirk doing? No, what? <laughs> we can't do anything. That's the whole point. Now, of course, one... <laughs> Excalibur, a direct hit. Ten seconds. We have 53 dead here. 12 on the Excalibur. 53 plus 12 dead? I'm sorry, sir. I can't override him. Can't even respond. Jim, why don't you answer? Jim! There's your murder charge. Misunderstood. Say some! He's just firing. Oh, no. Who's Engrams? Why, mine, of course. Of course. Then perhaps you could talk to the unit. Excalibur Captain Harris and First Officer dead. No. The Enterprise refuses to answer and is continuing attack. They're gonna have to attack the Enterprise. I believe the only way to stop the Enterprise is to destroy her. I can make it stop. I created it. M5, your attack on the starships is wrong. You must break it off. Enemy vessels must be neutralized. You're killing, murdering human beings, beings of our own kind. This unit must survive. To kill a breaking of civil and moral laws we've lived by for thousands of years. So this is basically like a child, like a newborn babe. Dr. Daystrom has created a mirror image of his own mind. You are great. I am great. 20 years of groping to prove the things I'd done before were not accidents. The M5 must be destroyed. Destroy it, Kirk? Look what we've done. Your mighty starships. More toys to be crushed as we choose. What the heck? He's gone completely insane. Look what we've done, and he's proud of it. And he's Take care of him, Doctor. Yeah, yeah now it's fascinating. <laughs> the Excalibur looks dead. No. M5. Many lives were lost. The ships attacked this unit. This unit must survive. They didn't, though. This unit must survive so man may be protected. Highly illogical. Must you survive by murder? This unit cannot murder. But you have murdered. Scan the starship Excalibur, which you destroyed. Is there life aboard? No life. No life at all. How will you pay? for your acts of murder. You must die. All phase of power gone, sir. M5 is leaving itself open to attack. Oh, great. The machine is committing suicide. Pull out the plug, Spock. Hurry up, hurry up. M5 has left itself and us open for destruction. Our 19 lives will buy the survival of over 1,000 of our fellow Starship crewmen. So we still can't get command or control back of the ship. Phasers on target. Systems coming back. I can give you power for the shield, sir. I need communications. Yeah, communications. Cut power. Keep those shields down. This is a big gamble. The Enterprise looks dead. I'm going to take a chance. She's not just laying a trap. Break off attack. Do not fire. The Enterprise has dropped her shield. Do not fire. Whew. He made the right choice. He'll have to be committed to a total rehabilitation center. Arrest him. When I forced the M5 to realize that it had committed murder, Daystrom felt that such an act was an offense against the laws of God and man. Captain, why did you feel the attacking ships would not fire? But I knew Bob Wesley. I gambled on his humanity. Compassion. That's the one thing no machine ever had. Mm-hmm. Better debate that spot? No, Doctor. Which do you prefer to have around? And I believe I have already answered that question. It would be most interesting to impress your memory engrams on a computer, Doctor. The resulting torrential flood of illogic would be most entertaining. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> Take us back to the space station. And walk back to two.
right, well, that was a lot of fun. It was really hard for me to comment because there were a lot of things that I wanted to say during that, but the episode was just moving so fast. It was, there was constantly things happening that I could not get an, a word in at all. And by now, I've forgotten all the questions that I had because eventually they all got answered. We've kind of seen this before. This is kind of a retread of things that we've talked about before, about humanity versus computer, compassion, what separates humans from computers, why even if computers are like perfect in being efficient in making calculations and things like that, they will always be missing that human intuition, that human compassion, the human touch. I did feel like the end where Kirk was talking to the M5 and making it realize that it had murdered people was it i don't know it felt a little bit like it went a little bit too fast like i kind of wanted a little bit more but maybe maybe it was the perfect time spent on that conversation because again we don't have to retread kind of the same things over and over again that we've done in episodes but it did feel like kind of a bit too easy but it did take them a while to figure out exactly how to deal with it and then once they realized that it was more human than they originally thought, that it had some of the characteristics of Daystrom, it's kind of interesting, actually, that the M5 seemed to have more of a sense of that it was wrong than Daystrom himself. Like, the M5 was a bit more human in the end than Daystrom because Daystrom I guess his mind was just kind of twisted to where he couldn't come to terms with the fact in the moment that he was wrong and that he had murdered tells himself that it's for progress and it's so that people won't have to die out in space but did he really care about all that stuff? Or was he just trying to stay relevant and to keep creating and to keep making advancements in his name like they were talking about Einstein and all those others couldn't just decide that they were going to make some kind of crazy breakthrough and Daystrom decided that it was time for him to make another breakthrough because he didn't want to be left in obscurity. He didn't want to be in the position where he was just giving seminars. It's a very interesting character. Very, very interesting. I could really delve into that a lot more if I think really hard on it, but I don't know if I, I can do that right now, this very moment. But it was like he was delusional because clearly he thought that murder was wrong. So why did he kind of triumphantly say like, yes, we did this and not feel any remorse? I feel like when he does come to if he is able to actually really come to terms with what he did, what he caused, and the lives that were lost that were on his hands and his hands only, well, we know what he's going to think, that he should be put to death. Well, they're not going to do that because they've already decided that they're going to rehabilitate him, I think they said. But he is... wow. I mean... Good luck to him on being able to reintegrate into living a semi-normal life and being able to live with himself and what he's done. I think he's going to be horrified. I guess if I could change one thing about this episode, if I would change just one tiny thing about this episode, it would be the end where Kirk is just smiling really jovially. I know we just got a nice little interaction between um, Spock and Bones, and those are always a delight, but over 400 people died. I mean, this was a really traumatic and just really bad situation. A lot of damage, a lot of injuries, a lot of deaths, and they were on the ship that caused those deaths and not being able to do anything, I feel like I would be traumatized. I would not recover from that for a long time. And I understand why they they like to have those happy endings. But 
They've also shown that they're not afraid to leave the ending a little bit more somber. And I feel like maybe that would have worked a little bit better here. But I mean, that's just a tiny nitpick that I just thought of right now. I wasn't thinking of it as I was watching it or anything. So I think I'm just kind of trying to reach for more things to say about the episode. But this was a really, really enjoyable episode. Like I said, very fast paced. Like there was always something happening. And I think basically just don't give computers too much power because if it is a computer that doesn't have any compassion or human emotion, that's really bad. But if it does have those human ingrams, I guess, whatever they called them, those human seeds planted of a personality and kind of will to survive and things like that, then it could be an even worse situation in that case. So yeah, let the humans do the humaning from now on. And really great episode. Maybe a top 10 contender, not sure. But ugh, I got to make that list soon. I'm excited. All right, as always, let me know what you guys thought about this episode. How do you rank it? What were your favorite parts? And I'll see you guys next week for the next episode. Bye bye.